this, uh, these shots here that will follow were taken in the filter center where I worked in Albany, in the Albany Air Defense Filter Center. This is our lounge. You saw the map on the wall there. This is our kitchen area, our hot soups. This is a gentleman named Mr. Doolittle. He was in charge of the civilians that worked there. And here we see one of the civilians behind the board displaying information that she's receiving from the ground observers on this plexiglass plotting board. All the information she puts on there, she has to put on backwards so that it can be read correctly from the front by the people you're seeing here in the dais. Some of the volunteers along with an airman there, sergeant. I don't remember the names of these people. At one time I knew them, of course, but... Never suspecting that I'd be doing this sort of narration. I never wrote them down or anything. Here is a little closer look at the young lady putting information on the board. As I said, it's necessary for these people to write backwards. It only takes a short time to learn to do that. And this is an individual in the dais who's reporting this information onto the radar site. And the sergeant who I mentioned previously I can't for the life of me tell you what his name is now, but uh, this is looking at the plotting board. There's our sign. This is a, uh, a logo you saw there on the front of the lectern was one that I had painted. Max says he just got to my party. This is a party they gave me when I left the VA hospital in Albany. It was at the Frahas restaurant, was it? <laughs> Frahas, I guess it was. Um, a regular Swiss Alpine thing. You'll see a, uh, one of the waiters here showing off a bit. And he's dressed like uh, the Swiss. can't make out, uh, I can't make out, I couldn't remember the names of these people anyway if I tried. There, there's the waiter. Isn't he great? That was our night supervisor, Mrs. Williams, the woman that was with him. shorts. He was cute. This one was. Show off. I'm going to be coming up here pretty soon when we opened our going away gifts. Uh, I want you to notice how long my hair was. I don't know if it's going to show on this because there's Mrs. Williams. She was That's right. Williams was uh, on the floor. Okay, she was a uh, night supervisor of the whole hospital. That's right, Berkey. Okay, here we're opening. That's Van Alstein, one of the nurses. They, she was getting married, and they had a shower for her at the same time. I didn't get pretty stuff like that. I got luggage because I was going away. I don't know if you remember that, Steve. They'd given me that blue... Uh, Oshka. Here I am. I don't know if you're going to be able to see my hair. But it was long. What is that, a purse? Did I get a purse, too? I guess so. Well, I don't 
remember that. I know there was a leather cigarette case in it. Stuff you got was all the same color. The but purse wasn't blue. It looked brown. Boy, I haven't changed much. I was still all mouth, huh? Except that I was thin. That's what married life does to you. It puts the old pound on. See my hair? It's all the way down below my waist. Wow. Oh. I'm going to turn you back over to Mac now because he knows more about this than I do. And he's more interested in fish than I am. Go, Steve, go. Here's Mac. These shots right here were taken out at uh, Dogwood Bluffs on Lake, Cham uh, on Lake Ontario, uh, west of Oswego. Some friends of ours, uh, friends of the family, had a camp out there, Boots and Margie. And uh, this is a camp they had for many, many years. They built the camp themselves, buildings on it. And off in the distance there, you could see uh, Lake Ontario. This is the eating area outside. And uh, this is the uh, fireplace. And these are the outhouses, outside plumbing. Now we got a shot down the cliff to Lake Ontario itself. Let's see, waves rolling in down there, as you can see. This is quite a drop down, and in a moment, uh, I'll be showing you a shot of the ladder, uh, which uh, gives us access to the lake shore. Here we go. And you can see how far down one has to go to reach that beach down there. At this particular time, it was mostly stones, but uh, on occasion, sand did come in, and they would have a sandy beach, uh, probably ever so briefly. The sand didn't stay too long. The movement of the water uh, would dictate uh, the type of beach they had from time to time. Here's Steve in a swing. Behind him there is their woodshed and outhouse. Now we do a little slow motion here of Steve on the swing. Being pushed by his mother. Speed it up. Here's my dad walking one of the dogs. Uh, Boots and Margie had a friend of theirs over that owned these dogs at this particular time. There I am petting one of them. And I don't recall the name of the gentleman who owned these dogs. So I can't be of any assistance as far as identifying him. You'll see a picture of him here shortly. This is Margie, uh, Boots' wife, the people that own this camp.
Roots and Margie, very dear friends of my folks. There's my dad standing in front of my car. And there I am. Boots and Margie were one of the first couples that my folks met after they were married. They were next door neighbors, in fact. Margie died the same year my dad did. And at this particular time, I'm not sure whether Boots is still alive or not. I haven't talked with him since 1977 when my dad died, and I called him to inform him of that. Here we are in Utica, at my Aunt Lucretia and Uncle Ray's apartment, and the table is all set for a Sunday dinner, it looks like. And my Aunt Lucretia sits down at the end of the table there, you just barely see her. And the gray-haired lady on the opposite side of the table is Laura Spicer, an old friend of the family and I believe a distant relative. My Uncle Ray is down here at uh, this end of the table. This is a painting that my aunt had on the wall. took a picture out and another one these are oil paintings where or why she got them I have no idea now we're back in our flat in Albany this is my niece Linda again taking her first steps ceremoniously get up and start all over again here is a good example of the old philosophy that if first you don't succeed the heck with it taking a bath in our kitchen sink. She certainly liked water. As you'll see when Bernice tries to get her out and she insists on going back. Nope, let's get back in the tub. shot of our parakeet. Pretty bird. This bird had a complex. I don't know what it was about telephones. The telephone was situated right near the bird cage and whenever the phone would ring and we'd try to carry a conversation, the bird would not shut up for one minute. This is in our kitchen on Delaware Avenue. We, uh, the folks had come down from Plattsburgh and there's my in a lot of hell. and across the table from her you saw my wife's aunt Bert. Uh, she and her husband came over. We had a little get together one weekend. There's Aunt Bert and my wife having a conversation in the kitchen. Now we're in the living room. There's Jim Wilford, Bert's husband, and their son Jimmy with the Frankenstein mask on. He has 
No aversion to having his picture taken as long as he wears a mask, I guess. He didn't dart away on this occasion. And my father-in-law, Herb. I guess Jimmy's trying to drink a beer through that mask. And now for our science fiction portion of the program. They came from outer space. They being Mike and Steve. Steve is the first one with my DMLA sweater and Mike behind him. This was my car that I had at the time and probably of all the cars I owned, the one that I liked the best. 1953 Packard Caribbean. And I'll give you uh, complete coverage of it here. Were I to have this car today, it would be worth a small fortune. for about eight years and sold it for $75. There's dad just getting in his new Ford. To back out and uh, go off on an errand somewhere. Just be careful, don't hit that Packard herb. Give us a wave goodbye. How about a wave? Come on, Herb. Give us a wave. There you go. Thank you. This is my sister-in-law, Joanne. That's her oldest son, Herbie. expecting their fourth child who eventually became known as Cindy but she doesn't particularly care to have her picture taken in her delicate condition few slow motion shots here that I tried Steve or this is Mike running and jumping across the puddle very good Mike Standing, but pretty good. Now we have Steve attempt the same feat. This is all in slow motion. And, well, when are you going to jump, Steve? Well, Steve decided not to jump at all. He just ran around it. Now the star attraction will try it. He's up. He's over. Let's see what kind of a response that jump gets. Oh, wonderful. Everybody is certainly pleased with that one. <laughs> this is my wife putting on her best face. I can't believe it. She's not running away from the camera. 
here are the kids, Nancy, Joanne's second child, Joanne and Francis. Oh, I'm sorry, Nancy was the first one. Then Herbie, who was on the far right, Mike and Steve in the middle, as the gang breaks up. Yes, I believe I identified her. Nancy's the oldest, and uh, Herbie was second. Here we are trying to get the kids to do something since these are movies. So my mother-in-law steps in to lend a hand and get some action here on our home movies. We're missing Steve. Where is he? There he is. Okay, now we're all together. Let's do a little ring around the rosy bed here and maybe we'll get some help from Walt Disney a little help Walt there we go Nancy's got in her hand. Here we are heading down Route 9. There's Poca Moonshine Mountain. We're on our way back to Albany. This is the Route 9 that we had to take to the construction of the Northway. This is just one small section of it. But basically what the road was like uh, all the way at least to Glens Falls. for a day of fishing. There's my father-in-law Herb and his brother Hi testing the waters.
Kai's brother-in-law are in the other boat. That's his, Herb's brother Henry right there trying to start the other motor. And without too much success, I might add. And the other gentleman in the boat with Henry is... must be a good one. They got the net out for this one. Got him up to the boat. Herb's manning the net. Come up under the fish. We'll lift him in the boat and see just how good a fish it is. Uh-huh. Nice bass. There it is. Yes, that's a nice bass. Here we are back into the river again. It started to rain. We came back in to get under the bridge to, in an attempt to keep dry. We waited for the rain to stop, but it never did, so we packed up everything, called it a day, and stopped in at a nearby pub, which you'll see here in a moment. Once we reached the pub, weather cleared up. Here we are. This is uh, my wife's aunt, Lita. It's the son of dad's brother, Hi. And she's getting in her car. This is another automobile today that would be worth a great deal of money. It's a Studebaker Silver Hawk. And she's going to take it for a little spin for my camera. I know at that time that this car would be a collector's item also. Beautiful automobile. They don't make them like that anymore. She's going up to the next watering hole and turn around. This is all done just for my benefit so that I can take movies of the car. And here we are telling fish stories. Outside the Oasis Bar. Leader's brother. 
and there's Lita. Holding something, I'm not sure what. These pictures, obviously, since I'm in them, and I'm explaining how big the fish was I caught. Of course, Herb's was bigger. But mine was also tall, as you just saw. It's what I like to catch, tall fish. <laughs> 